All right. Hello and good evening, everyone. Thank you for joining us. This is uh, our monthly free live Zoom event uh, supporting the Decriminalized Nature Arizona program here in Arizona. And we're really pleased to have two very special guests with us today, and I'm excited to introduce them to you in just a moment. But first, I uh, just want to welcome everybody to this live event. Um, We've been doing these for the past few months, and I think by this point of 2020, we're all familiar with how online meetings work. So just wanna set up a few logistical and uh, ground rules so that we all know how we can participate in this uh, event here. So over on the right, you see the running chat log. It's already getting pretty active. So uh, please, please contribute, please add your uh, questions and your insights and uh, be a part of this discussion. Uh, there's also an ask a question button down at the bottom, and that's where you can ask uh, some questions directly, and, and we can field those through the conversation. <clears throat> a little bit more about us here, who we have online. Um, my name is Ben Sullivan. I'm uh, part of the ed education and advocacy team here for the Decriminalized Nature Arizona. We've got um, our other team member, Stuart, who's kind of running the boards behind the scenes here, and Cable will be in the chat log offering some links and other additional information about our guests here and where's ways to go to find some resources about what we're discussing. So our topic for this evening in this particular um, gathering that we're here for is healing our veterans and the promise of psychedelic therapy and to have this discussion with us, I'm really honored to welcome uh, these two men and these two veterans here. Jesse Gould. Uh, Jesse Gould is a pioneer in psychedelic therapies, a founder and president of Heroic Hearts Project. He has spearheaded the research and acceptance of ayahuasca therapy programs for military veterans. His mission is to help military veterans struggling with mental trauma and spread awareness of the benefits that ayahuasca therapies offer as an alternative treatment to pharmaceuticals. Jesse has spoken globally about the benefits of psychedelics on mental health and has been featured in the New York Times and Rolling Stone magazine and recognized as one of the social entrepreneurs to watch in 2020. Jesse, thank you so much for being here. I'm really glad that you're willing to join us here tonight. Thank you for having me. It's an honor. We also are pleased to welcome Mike Cooley. Mike Cooley is one of the veterans featured in the film From Shock to Awe. In the film, Mike shares an intimate view into his process of healing from severe PTSD through working with ayahuasca. Mike, thank you so much for being a part of this as well. Thank you very much. And to both of you, first and foremost, thank you for your service. Thank you for the sacrifice that you made for this country and how you had served and protected all the people here. We really appreciate and thank, that, thank you for that. And of course. And, and thank you to the veterans in the audience here who are joining us. Uh, many, many thanks and endless amounts of respect for the, all the sacrifice that you made in order to keep this country safe. So we'd like to just kind of get right to it. And I'd like to, you know, give each of you an opportunity to speak a bit more about, you know, your path and, and how it found yourself to plant medicine and ayahuasca and then you know, sharing a little bit about your own personal journey and then how that led into the work you're doing now to continue to support others, your fellow brothers and sisters in arms who are returning from, from war and <clears throat> conflict and carrying with them some trauma that they are looking to heal. So, Jesse, why don't you tell us a little bit about yourself more than, uh, you know, kind of the intro there and how, how you got to where you are here today. Yeah, of course. Uh, thank you so much for the intro and it was a pleasure to be here and talk with everybody. Uh, I was in the the Arizona Psychedelic Conference. It seems almost like 10 years ago at this point, but this year has also been 10 years in its own right. So uh, it was a pleasure back then. And it's good to talk to Arizona. It's, it's always been very supportive. And today's the Marine, the Marine Corps birthday uh, and tomorrow is Veterans Day. So uh, thank you to all the veterans. Thank you to all the Marine Corps uh, veterans as well. Um, so yeah, so my, my journey in the military anyway, started, uh, in the army. Um, I was an army ranger, uh, had a number of deployments in Afghanistan and when, and personally, I, I really got a lot out of my experience. It really developed me into who I am and there's a lot of struggles and, and strife, but it, it developed me, uh, to be the person and to be, um, the leader and, 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 and 
continue on to successes in later in my life, but I also had struggles when I was trying to adapt to civilian life. Uh, a lot of struggles that nobody really prepared me for or had any idea about. And these took the form of, of a, you know, the conversation today, mental health in terms of had a lot of anxiety attacks, depression, um, self-medication with abundance of alcohol, just really trying to figure out who I was and, and a lot of it ignoring the problem because I came from that sort of, uh, I can solve my own problems. I did all this overseas. Um, and I did good on the outside, on the surface. I went back into finance. That was my background and I had a great job. I had a great social life, but there was just a lot behind the scenes that really just started eating at me. And I always describe it as a stark cloud. And the more I ignored it, the worse it got. And it got to a point where eventually I couldn't ignore it. It was just affecting my life and a lot of unhealthy habits. Um, I also came from a background where I didn't have a past of, of drug use or even interest in psychedelics. I had that dare sort of dare generation view of if you do drugs, you're a bad person and you're probably going to end up a failure. Um, fortunately, I overcame that, uh, that, that, that belief system. I uh, heard about ayahuasca and for whatever reason, probably still can't explain it well today, it appealed to me and uh, eventually I took that leap of faith. I just came to that point in my life where more days were unhappy than happy and I knew that something had to change and the, the mental health options in terms of medications and what everybody else was pushing on me just one, weren't working in my peer group, and two, weren't appealing to me. Um, and so fortunately, I took that that leap of faith. I found a reputable retreat in Peru and bought a one-way ticket there. Um, and the the rest speaks for itself, as many others that have gone on this path went there. You know, completely rocked my world, was, was a hard experience, but within myself and within the others around me saw some amazing transformations. And from that day, it was just the the simple message of this should be known by more people, and especially my community, the veteran community, which is obviously struggling from a mental health crisis, a suicide crisis. And that was the original inspiration of Heroic Hearts. Um, these veterans deserve to know that there are other options out there. And so that's what we've been trying to develop with Heroic Hearts, not only information, but also developing a program that supports veterans, uh, these people in need to get uh, to places where they can do this safely, successfully, and have the support of other veterans that have gone through it. That's wonderful. Thank you, Jesse. And Mike, how about you? What was the journey that brought you uh, to brought you to this place? Uh, so I, I was uh, going to junior college um, when 9-11 happened and really had no direction in my life. And uh, I remember standing in the living room of my sister and brother-in-law's uh, uh, house and watching the second plane fly into the towers and uh, just kind of going okay i have nothing going on in my life i was actually skipping class at the time and uh i was like i've got to do something better with my life and uh so i joined the army and uh spent the next uh almost 12 years of my life in the army i was a military policeman uh, uh in the uh in the airborne and i was a canine handler and um it was pretty, pretty amazing, pretty amazing times. Um, but I, I witnessed a lot of stuff that really, really damaged uh, who I, who I was at my core, and uh, participated in, you know, um, and and it really left me just a hollow shell of a man, and uh, was medically retired, um, and just went downhill very, very quickly, um, became uh, suicidal, um, just just a zombie on all of the psych meds that I had been given. Um, 
and uh, my, my wife is a veteran as well. And uh, she had gone through some, some terrible, terrible experiences in the military as well. And uh, she, I mean, we, we were both on a collision course right alongside each other. And we started battling each other because, you know, there was nobody else to fight. And uh, it, it started just destroying our house, destroying our family, destroying our marriage. Um, she attempted suicide uh, a couple of times. Um, I did as well. And uh, it was just, it was just horrible. Um, we were introduced to cannabis and that allowed us to kind of start healing uh, on, on a gradual, uh, level, but it really didn't allow us to heal to a level that we could function, um, as, as parents and, and adults and, um, you know, members of society, um, at that point in time, uh, we, we were just, we just had so much underneath that needed to be dealt with. And, um, we were actually introduced uh, at the 2015 Boulder Can Awards um, uh, to a Marine, uh, Ryan LeCompte, and he had uh, actually gone to the jungles and experienced uh, ayahuasca and what it could do for him, and he brought it to me, he introduced me to Janine and uh, Luke, uh, who, who put together the, the movie, who were the main, uh, main driving force of it. And, uh, and they were the ones who lined everything up. There was a, a contributor from overseas that I didn't even know that funded uh, both Matt and I going to the center that we did ayahuasca at, uh, Soul Quest in Florida. And, um, you know, I I was in my closet upstairs with my H and K forty five pressed to my temples the night before I left, um, telling myself that if uh, ayahuasca didn't change something, uh, that I was going to come back and I was going to go back to that closet, and I've never wanted to go back there since. Um, so here I am. That's beautiful. And, uh, yeah. yeah. Well, I think it's you know really commendable not only that uh, the work that you've done in your you know military life, but to bring that back home and recognize you know each in your own way. You shared a little bit about how there you just reached a breaking point where the pain that you were dealing with was just too much to bear, and that you know there was something that needed to be done. And, you know, Jesse, you mentioned it, and, and Mike, in the film, it's really apparent. You know, you and Mike, uh, you and Matt are like, truly going through this as brothers, you know. And Jesse, you shared a little bit about how, you know, you see how this, is, this type of help is needed, especially, you know, for the veteran community and your brothers and sisters in arms. Can you talk a little bit about what that means in terms of, you know, the difference between what you experienced in your military life and then what you experienced through this healing journey and how you see that being so applicable and needed for this community. And Jesse, I guess we'll start with you. Yeah, of course. Um, yeah, and I'll, I'll start off by saying, you know, it, obviously the mental trauma is, is not unique to the veteran community. There does, there is a, the heightened amount given the, 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 the changes of environments. It's a very extreme sort of change. But you know, with what we are both doing by spreading this message, we hope to not only help uh, our brothers and sisters uh, who are veterans, but have that expand to the rest of the community for all those that are they're experiencing trauma. And this this can help all sorts of people. Um, yeah, and and one of the things that obviously they don't prepare you for, like I said, it is this transformation from an extreme environment. When you are in the military, some of the good things that does happen is that you get closer to people than potentially even your own family, just because you're, you're under these extreme conditions, you're surrounded by them all the time. And it's really, you, you have to have somebody's back. And when you go transition to the civilian world, that almost just disappears. Oftentimes veterans go to different 
communities, depending on jobs, depending on their family. And, and a lot of it evaporates pretty quickly, even in the age of social media, it just really doesn't replace it. Um, and so that is a big part that just exacerbates a lot of the issues that veterans are already going through. That's also not addressed by current mental health uh, practices or, or therapies either. And so one of the things we're trying to do with these ceremonies, and that's the beauty of the ceremony, is it brings this tribe back together. It brings this community back together. And, you know, ayahuasca, psilocybin, a lot of them come stem from these indigenous um, practices where it was more about the tribe, it was more about the community and helping others that are struggling come back together through the, through the use of these strong medicines and through the use of understanding the, the community mental health with the addition of the individual mental health. Um, and so the healing journey on the individual basis is one, when you get out of it, um, you, through the psychedelic experience, have to confront um, a lot of the issues that you might be ignoring or you might not even know that you have. And it's often metaphorical. It's often in, obviously, in this, this weird uh, psychedelic state, but on a feeling level, you know what it means for, for the most part. And so you're, you're having to deal with this one-on-one -on -one of like, oh, especially in an ayahuasca setting, like, oh, hey, this, I, I've been lax in, in this part of my relationship, or this is something that I've been letting myself go, or I've been thinking myself a warrior, but I've actually not been living up to those standards that I, I used to. Um, but then when you are in these ceremonies with the group, other people similar to the military are struggling through some of the, the biggest crisis of consciousness that they've, they've experienced in their lives or, or since at least the military. And so it's, again, this, this bound by fire, this struggle, and it does build these very strong communities. And so the healing journey uh, on the individual and on the group level are both very powerful things. And that's, that's one of the things that these traditional uh, ceremonies really bring up and really people adapt to, especially the military community. It's at its core uh, built around ceremony. It's built around uh, this tradition that goes back through cultures, through generations. And so I think a lot of veterans, when they go to something that's a little bit different, a little bit foreign, but it has sort of those same sort of basics, they, they really uh, take to it. And that's, that's kind of what we've seen. And it's very powerful. Yeah, certainly is. And, you know, and, and Mike, I'm thinking of, you know, the scene in your film where it's the, when you're at Soul Quest and it's, you know, everyone sitting around that fire and, and you know, it's it's a very communal experience. And, you know, there might not even, you might have just met these people, you know, earlier that day. But can you talk a little bit about, you know, coming, as Jesse said, from, you know, that military experience to something like that in an experience that you've never experienced before in this way, what that was like for you? Uh, absolutely, absolutely. Uh, you know, Jesse, Jesse absolutely hit on it. Uh, there's, there's a sense of community. There's a, a sense of uh, tribe even in the military. And uh, when you get out, it, that just, it, it, it just gets closed behind the door behind you. And uh, for so many it feels like you're now just in this unfamiliar world, unfamiliar territory, and you're all alone. You have no support network. You, you know, everybody else has their mission still. They're still, and you understand that, that they have to take care of that mission because you were a part of it, but now you're outside of it. And so what do you do? And, um, you know, I, we Matt, Matt and I, we've talked about it. Um, I, I love talking about it because it, it's one of the things that really just is at the core of how I feel all of these um, medicines should be used is, is in a respectful ceremonial manner. Um, you know, set and setting are so important. And uh, when they're given the respect that, that they deserve, you know, when when you're in a in a group setting, sitting around a fire and it's quiet and it's understood that this is, 
you know, this is a quiet time, that this is when we're focusing on what this is and everything else takes its seat and a second place to this. It, it's, it's an honoring of that space. And it's, it goes back to our, our roots, our ancestry of sitting around a fire as a community, as a family. And, um, and that's something I think that really sings true to the heart of veterans um, a lot of us, you know, just need that. And uh, it, it's more so a lot of a lot of tribes, a lot, you, you can look back in history books and, and read about it, um, that that when they're when the warriors would return from battle, they weren't allowed back into the village until they had been uh, ceremonially ceremonially cleansed of the battle and of what they had done and what they had experienced. And then they could only, uh, after that, be welcomed back into the community, um, you know, having shed their, their warlike tendencies and needs. And there's really not any type of a ceremony like that for any military. There's, there's a, an initiation ceremony but there's really nothing you get you get a piece of paperwork and you sometimes you get some powerpoint classes and and then you're out in a completely different world and and i think that 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 is such an integral part of the the healing process of these medicines is that they're they're wrapped in that you know that that archaic revival um that some people speak of, of of getting back to the core of what community really and truly is when everything else you know is is filtered away and what's important is is left right before you so i hope that but i digress <laughs> i hope that that kind of answer digressing because it's I mean, I, to, to hear to hear you i mean we have it in the comments right here you know the reverence that you're both sharing for this medicine and the the roots just as you're saying of it you know this isn't this isn't just something you did for fun you know just oh, the way no. it was work it, yeah i think that that is a message that you know especially in times like this you know remembering to return to our roots to honor where we come from and to recognize that it is you know for the veterans returning to civilian life you know, it's a different world, you know, and as mm -hmm. a civilian, no, I cannot even begin to imagine what that shift would be like, you know, and so to hear, you know, both of you sharing it from your perspective, I think there's, I'm not the only one who has never thought about it that way, who has never thought that, wow, it's got to be, there is no ceremony to welcome you back and help you shift from, you know, the, the military back to the civilian, you know, in such a way. So thank you for sharing that. And so, at, you know, at this point, I think both of you in your own ways have taken your experience and then allowed it to lead you somewhere where you are now helping people literally across the globe. Like the work that you have done and the projects you've been involved in has, has spanned, you know, country to country across this globe because of the experiences that you had. So I'd like you to share a little bit, if you would, about what that what that shift was like when you saw it okay you had your personal experience and now i need to share this i need to get this out to others because i know i'm not the only one and, and kind of what that was like so you know mike you're on a roll why don't we start with you what was that like when you you know to see how you wanted to bring this out to more people um you know it actually it it kind of came to it, it came to us um and I realized that it needed to be done. Um, I guess even through the, the difficulty of having to, to face everything, having to go through it, you know, um, during the filming, uh, there were several times where Brooke wanted to just end it, just cut it, just get out of my house. She didn't want the film crew here. She didn't want anyone here. She, you know, um, and, uh, there, you know, we had so much going on that we were, 
uh, trying to work through while the filming was going on and after the ceremony and how different I was afterwards. And uh, it, it threw her into a spin where then she had all of her uh, demons start to come out even more so. And uh, it was it was just so chaotic. It was just kind of it was like there was another force driving it for a good while. And and we were just blessed to be a part of it and to be witness to it um, and not even really aware at times how much the medicine was working through the situations and the events we were going through to heal us. It, it, it was, it actually began showing us that it worked through us even after the ceremony. It became a part of every single day of our life that it, it was teaching us something new. It was showing us something we needed to work on. It was changing something. Um, and, uh, and it just kind of flowed. And, and after a while, we just kind of relaxed into the fact that, you know, no matter what chaos we were going through at the time, we were getting better. And it was, it was like a forging process, you know, it was this constant reheating and removing of, of these impurities that resurfaced and, and surfaced again. And, um, and that if, 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 even one person could see our struggle and our story and that it wasn't a perfect path and that it wasn't just like a, a boom, one ceremony and life is amazing. If somebody could see that and, and get some type of, of benefit out of that, then everything we had to go through was worth it. And, uh, and even still now we come back to that, you know, when, when, you know, perfect strangers will will pop up on social media or um, at a, I went to a recent ayahuasca ceremony and I met multiple people that who were there because they saw the film mm -hmm. and I had never even met them in person before. And I'm just blessed and honored that it's it in itself is just reaching out and doing the work. Um, that's that's the medicine just just you know, continuing to work in so many different avenues and so many different ways. It, it, it's amazing. So it, it's, it's really, it's, it's been a blessing for me and it, it hasn't been my work. You know, it, it's been my joy and my blessing to flow with it, I guess, and learn to flow with it. So that's great. Well, watching the video, it seemed like you did a lot of work. So I think there was a little bit of work in there on your part, so don't shortchange. <laughs> There's always work to be done. There is. That's how about you, Jesse? So how did it go from you know Jesse Gould's self healing, the healing journey to heroic hearts? I, I'd say it's probably better classified as Jesse Gould from what the hell just happened to <laughs> the <laughs> self healing that happened from that. Um, and I'll, I'll highlight something Michael says. It's it's more of the the path finds you as opposed to you finding the path. You know, it, it really highlights the, we, we tend to think we have more control over what's going on than we actually do. And it's kind of more of accepting um, the situation we're in and what we have to offer than actually directing of this is what I'm gonna do. So yeah, fortunately, like I, I one of the, the advice and the advice I, I continue to give now is there tends to be that honeymoon experience after a lot of these, uh, psychedelic experience where you just want to scream it off the top of the highest mountaintop and uh, that's great but you also want to you know allow yourself to settle and allow you to understand what just happened and allow the path to sort of create itself um, and not be too forceful on others that are on different um, timelines of their own healing journey and so I, I took that to heart and so I had that initial need or that initial desire but I decided to do more research and and had that sort of back and forth too with my ego of like, am I crazy? Did this really happen? What what's going on? And so I took some time. Um, 
but the more time I took, the more changes I noticed that couldn't just be described or couldn't just be cast off. And it, 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 it really started to become more of an obligation um, as opposed to a, a mission or anything like that. It was more of like, hey, this, this was pretty impactful. And I don't necessarily know at this point what, uh, how much this translates to other people. I don't know if maybe I'm an anomaly or, or, or what have you, but even if I am one in a million, one in 10 million, that deserves to be known by other uh, people that I know that I know are struggling. You know, they deserve to at least know that maybe there is the opportunity for them to pursue something that could even minimally help them. And that obligation really just started to cement of, I guess, the obligation to friends, the obligation to people you served with, the obligation to the, the original reasons you joined the military um, and as a leader in the military. And so that's how it really started for me of, I know this thing and I know it helped me. Um, and I know it helped the people that I was around in that ceremony. And those that I know are struggling that have the same limited options that I have should at least be able to make their choice. They should have that right to know all the options and pursue this if that is something that they're interested in. Um, and so that really was sort of the inspiration of Heroic Hearts Project. Uh, I talked to a lot of my friends who were still in Ranger or had got out who were in special forces who were in other special operations unit. And I was like, Hey, am I crazy? Like, did I just do something crazy or does this make sense? And more often than not, which surprised me, um, they were more on the side of like, Hey, if you're telling me it works, I respect you. I, I know who you are as a human. And it seems a little weird to me, but it, if, if you're saying it works then why not let people know this, why not, uh, share this message? Um, and you know the, the more we continue on the cost benefit analysis is ridiculous in comparison to anything else the, the the what's the harm if you have the safe protocol and you have um the people that know what they're doing versus what is the potential benefit and it is amazingly one-sided um on uh, across the board on ayahuasca on psilocybin on even what they're saying with a controlled like MDMA therapy, the, what we're seeing in terms of spectacular results versus what they have been doing in the past for mental health, for PTSD, it's been declared breakthrough therapies for a reason. And that's the, the, the basic message. And it is that sort of, you know, the, the, this with everything going on, you know, individual rights and everything like that has, has become sort of a contentious issue, but I, I do think that there is a basic right for each person to heal themselves, to explore options that could potentially make them better. And that's a, in my mind, should be a very hard thing to argue against. I think we'd all agree with that. So share a little bit more about the Hero Hearts Project, if you would. What is, you know, we mentioned at the top uh, helping um, veterans and different people who are looking to, uh, you know, get in touch with some of these uh, opportunities. What does that look like? Kind of talk us through what, what the work that you're doing with this project. Yeah, of course. Um, so yeah, we, we, we've been operating and, you know, at the core, uh, like I said before, it's to provide uh, information, um, especially veterans as any other profession. Um, there, there tends to be certain language that you can get to the certain trust aspect. So if you are a veteran speaking to other veterans, it tends to go a little bit further and you, you can get to commonality much quicker. So we, we were just providing um, information about psychedelics and this sort of therapy in veteran speak for lack of a be better, better term of, hey, this is how I view it and this is how I'm going to present it to you. Um, but we've also developed a program since then in terms of veterans who are looking to follow a similar journey as myself or Michael, how can they do that and be set up for success? So they don't have to like go to some sketchy retreat or they don't have to, you know, figure out this whole integration thing on their own. And so that's really what we've developed as Heroic Hearts, sort of our own proprietary program where veterans come to us uh, when we have the donations and the funds 
We will set up groups. Uh, we work with retreat centers that we verified and that are aligned with, with our cause and are doing things as, as we see it in the right way with respect and sustainability and, and um, preserving tradition, preserving, um, you know, helping, helping out indigenous communities, all, all, the, all the things involved with that. Um, but then we also provide sort of the, the outside parameters of this. Um, and, you know, most people probably in this conference know that integration and the around support is just as important. Psychedelics are a very powerful tool uh, and they can really have insight, but you have to do a lot of work before and afterwards. And so we have the coaching, we have certified coaches, we have the preparation, we have, we connect them to retreats, we give them financial grants, and then we follow up. We do follow up support of like, hey, that's great. You had an amazing experience, but now what are you going to do with your your life. You, you said that you're going to be a better husband. You said you're going to be a better wife. You said you're going to go to the gym. Are you actually? Uh, what tools, what mechanisms are you going to do to set, your, set, set yourself up for success? How are you going to avoid your negative patterns, your negative habit, habits? And that takes a community. That takes, you know, one, somebody that has gone through it, but also the other people that have gone through the same thing to continue to support you even if you fall, even if you relapse, that community is still there and it's all about moving forward um, and, and helping each other out. And so that's really what we've been developing. Ayahuasca has been at the core of our program just because we found it to be very effective for veterans. There is some sort of connection, I think, with the tradition, with the sort of going back, you know, uh, centuries, uh, veterans just seem to really take to that, but we we work with all sorts of different psychedelics and, and centers, uh, depending on where the veterans at, depending on the trauma, and so our job is really just to provide veterans or connect them to effective therapy options, and that looks like psychedelic therapy options across the board, and so we're just trying to bring the information out there, connect them to that. And fortunately, we've been able to align with a few universities to uh, promote more research around it, promote more understanding, um, and just get the message out there. You know, at the, at the very least, obviously, there's still a lot of stigma. There's still a lot of fear around even just the word psychedelic. But through veterans and through all these different means of communication, we hope to just at least get to that conversation, at least get to that sort of point of like, hey, let's talk about this. Let's let's see why there's contention, why we can't look into this more. And then let's go from there. You know, there, there's very small steps that we can take that can make this progress much quicker. That's amazing. Wow. That's a, a lot of work that's been putting into getting this message out there. So that's really wonderful, Jesse. And I, you know, as Part of what we're doing here with the Decriminalized Nature Arizona is, you know, a lot of what this month, these monthly events are about is getting the word out on a lot of these opportunities. That it's more than just, uh, you know, it's more than just the ceremony. It's more than just taking the medicine and having the experience. It is the preparation. It is the integration. It's all of these different components that go into it because the ceremony begins long before anything is taken into the body and it lasts longer far longer than the next day. So to, to see that that's being incorporated in what you're doing, I think is really impactful. And, you know, to you, Mike, you know, you mentioned that you were, you were, you're still coming in contact with people, you know, perfect strangers, as you call them, who are, you know, still, they've seen your film, they've heard your story and they're being inspired about that. Um, you know, what's in terms of that integration piece, you know, helping these people that you're coming across make the same types of changes that you saw in yourself to last far beyond those ceremonies. What's that been like for you in the years since the film came out? It's, it's amazing how I had no idea going into that first ceremony how interwoven into my life uh, ayahuasca and psychedelics would become. Um, that my entire life was going to change from that point forward. Um, and 
listening to Jesse talk about all of the programs that they have set in place to help with everything afterwards, um, that is paramount. You know, the, 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 the psychedelic is, is just the stepping stone. Uh, you, you, it, it gives you the message. And after you receive the message, it's up to you to decide whether or not you're going to put it into play in your life, whether or not you're going to uh, m m make the changes and do the work that needs to be done because so much more work needs to be done afterwards. Um, and and it, it's... It's just been amazing to see the people who have gone through, the people I've known who have gone through. Um, and, you know, e even if they're, they're still going through rocky times, they, they were never what they were before. And they're continually learning lessons and, and progressing forward and making changes. And, uh, you know, everybody is learning at, at their own pace and then and their own path. But they're they're all stepping forward into this new understanding of what needs to be done in order to change their life, in order to uh, be a different person. Um, and and once again, you know, that's it's nothing that I've been doing. It's it's something I've been able to be witness to. Um, you know, not only in, in people's lives around me, but in my own life, uh, every single day I wake up and, and I learn something new about who I am and, and how I need to let go of things that are holding me back from being the best version of myself that I can be and what my connection is to everything in this universe and what that means. And, you know what it means to really be a member of society and a, a father and a husband and how to how to face myself you know because the these uh these medicines they don't erase everything that we've experienced in life they don't take everything away we don't just boom everything is just blissful you know in in our minds and in our thoughts um, it's, it's a, it's a daily battle and a struggle sometimes. Um, but it's one where if you put the work in, you can sit down and you can stare in the mirror and you can look at your demons and you can sit in their presence and understand that they exist as a part of who you are and if they didn't exist how would you have anything to gauge the light inside of you against you know if, if we don't have a darkness to gauge light against how do you know how bright it is how do you know what the light is um and these medicines allow at least for me um uh, the ability to look at those demons, to look at those shadows, to look at those memories, at those at those pieces of ourselves that sometimes we use to block our own paths and to understand that I can step over them, you know, and 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 Jesse, please, if if you see people being able to see that they're able to step beyond their own obstacles, beyond their own blockages uh, after ceremonies, after the medicine work, whereas beforehand it, it seemed insurmountable. Am I, am I kind of hitting on that? Have you seen that with the, the uh, some of the veterans going through your program? Yeah, hundred percent. Um, and that's, that's the, the benefit. The, one of the, the key metrics of all this is as, as you, beautifully pointed out it's it's a piece of it it's not the whole thing and we all try to to say this is not a magic pill it's not like you take some mushrooms you take some ayahuasca boom you're a better person and you're gonna go preach to the land um 
It is just one stepping stone, a very powerful stepping stone, uh, something that can get you very far. Uh, but it, you have to view it as that. And the people yeah. who don't put in the work before and afterwards, they're not going to get as much out of it. Um, and the, the reason being is this can accelerate sort of your psychotherapy. Like it can allow you to realize things that you've been hitting walls on about yourself, a very honest reflection, a very ego, um, reduced assessment of the self and then we're also seeing on the physical level it's also helping the brain in a lot of ways whether it's neurogenesis increased plasticity potentially reduced inflammation which is a, a huge uh dynamic that's affecting veterans so if you take away that physical detriment you take away the sort of hormone imbalance that veterans are also struggling with in addition to potentially the PTSD and, and the, the psychological issues. And then you also give them some more answers and, and avenues for the psychological side. They still have to contend and they still have to come to terms with a lot of stuff, but you're just taking some rocks out of that backpack that, that they've been uh, trying to carry for, for 10 years, 10 plus years. Absolutely. And, you know, Jesse, when you were talking a bit about just the amount of uh, help and the resources and uh, uh, the assistance that's available through the Heroic Hearts pro uh, Project, what, what's it been like this year? You know, it's been a year where everything's a little different. How has the, you know, kind of the events we're all been going through impacted what you've been able to get out there for the people? Yeah, I mean, you know, uh, it goes without saying this year has been a uh, roller coaster ride and challenging for for everybody involved and it's it's uh we've all had to reassess a lot of things that we we didn't think that we would have to reassess and the same thing on a personal level but also on an organizational level and so unfortunately um we haven't been able to uh operationally help as many veterans as as we are originally geared for just for out of safety out of travel logistics all that kind of stuff uh, and that's that's unfortunate, especially because um, a lot of the dynamics of of COVID uh, have actually exacerbated uh, current issues uh, with veterans. You know, just the isolation, the the staying at home has made a lot of the PTSD symptoms, depression much worse. Um, and at the same time, as we're reduced, our waiting list has just increased, increased, increased. But um, you know, we 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 didn't just stop we try to find the silver lining and fortunately with that silver lining we've just made ourselves stronger we've we've built up infrastructure we've increased our network we've provided support where we can and as this starts to reduce and hopefully there is a vaccine soon and we'll just be much better equipped uh to help the veterans in need as much as possible uh and so this last year it really has been that of we haven't been able to do a lot of the stuff we would like to, but we have been able to make ourselves better. And so in that time, we've expanded uh, in terms of we have a branch in the UK. We're currently um, expanding into Canada as well. Uh, we've been better uh, expanded in, in, in the US. We helped uh, the Oregon and, and DC initiatives as much as possible. Uh, unfortunately, those both passed. And so we're going to pursue what we can do in Oregon now that that's, you know, uh, an amazing victory there and, and people can actually get psilocybin therapy and at the same time just just our network of, of the people connections the interactions so we have an ambassador program of people that want to help who are veterans not veterans professionals but they just want to help in some sort of capacity so we're actively working on how can we empower you to help uh, to move this forward, to use your expertise or use just your enthusiasm to help us push this forward. So it's been a lot of a big learning curve. It's been, you know, uh, just tr all of us trying to figure it out. But, you know, if we're together and we brainstorm, I, I, we, we've, we've been very successful at moving forward, uh, figuring out given the pieces that we have right now. Um, and so it's 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 a lesson i think for all of us it's um you know it's not necessarily dwelling on on what we all planned and and what we are all prepared for but it's really just 
taking the temperature of what's right now and, and figuring out what you can do right now and, and moving forward with that. You can always move forward. And that's a lesson for veterans that are struggling. That's a lesson for everybody. That is great. That is great. Well, I want to shift a little bit and we have a lot of good questions that are coming in from the audience here. So I'm just going to kind of throw these out to the both of you and, uh, and then we can just kind of see, see what comes up. First one's kind of a softball to you, Jesse. This one's be easy. How can we help Jesse with Heroic Hearts Project? We see the links over on the right. Thank you, Cable, for putting those up, uh, the support and donate links. Aside from that, Jesse, how can people get involved? How can they help? What can we do? Yeah, of course. Uh, so we are a 501c3 in the US. Um, we're working to get nonprofit status in the other countries that I mentioned, UK, Canada. Um, and so that means, you know, uh, money that comes to us is tax deductible. Uh, but we also try to keep it as straightforward as possible. So fortunately, through some grants from great companies like Dr. Bronner's, which can cover the overhead, if you donate, we try to keep that as connected to the veterans as possible. So when we are able to, and it is actually opening up, we, we did a, a retreat earlier and we're hoping to do a lot more uh, in 2021. Your donations go directly towards helping veterans in terms of covering the retreat costs, their coaching, and potentially flight costs. And we try to make that as direct as possible. So, I mean, you know, as a, as a nonprofit, donations are always sort of the key of our ability. Um, as I mentioned before, we do have an ambassador program. So if you follow the links, heroicheartsproject.org, um, and there's ways to support, I think the link's there. And if you're interested in that, there's an application for the ambassador program. And it's very new, so we're, we're really just using the ambassadors right now to try to figure out what's the best way to empower the ambassadors. Um, so it's a great opportunity to help us brainstorm. Um, and then other than that, you know, the, the simplest way, I think the, the lowest hanging fruit is just spread the message. Uh, just if you see stuff, uh, share it. If you uh, have friends or have people, uh, especially influential people that can help, talk about it. Uh, conversation and one-on-one -on -one interaction is the most powerful way that we can all help is just spreading the message, finding your friends, finding your connections, finding those people that are in your network that can make a big difference, help it move forward and just have that conversation, start it up and see where it goes. Mm. That's great. There's the link for the ambassador program there as well. So, Okay, next question. I think we, uh, you know, we can send this to both of you. Mike, I'll start with you. This one comes from Belinda in the audience here. She says, I come from four generations of vets. How might you suggest I approach family members to consider the use of plant medicines to heal their PTSD? There is fear that this type of healing will impact their vet benefits. Mike, why don't we start with you? That's a real difficult one, you know. Uh, a lot of times, benefits are all a family has to go on. Um, I, you know, I have fears of that myself. You know, I have I have the movie out there. Um, I actually just spoke with the uh, uh, UC San Francisco VA, um, and and they watched the film, and they know I'm a veteran, and you know, um, I guess one of the the biggest things for me is uh would i rather be crippled by ptsd my entire life um or would i would i rather have a path of healing um that i can go down that actually works and um you know that that's a difficult decision and that's one that every individual has to make on their own is is what are they weighing you know um i guess for me um my entire life now is based around continually healing and if i hadn't been in the military if i hadn't experienced what i had if i hadn't gone through what i had i wouldn't be spending my life doing what I am. So in that uh, facet, I guess, uh, that's justification for benefits to continue. Because now this is my life. Because of my military service, my entire life is based around healing myself and my family. 
and whether or not I can do that and whether or not I put in the work and whether or not I, you know, and that that is my life. So that that I guess could be an arguable justification if, if it were ever something to come up. I don't know if it will hold water, but for me, it, the life that I'm living now, um, I am finally in a position where I can be a father, where I can be present, where I'm not having suicidal ideations. Um, and, and for me that that's worth everything. Um, how to approach that with a family member. That's a very difficult and, and can be a, a very delicate situation. And I think the best way, uh, that anyone, you know, we can only change ourselves. We can't change, even though we want to, I think that's one of the biggest messages that I've, I've had, uh, is, is we can only change ourselves. We can want for someone else to change. We can, um, but we can't force it upon them. Uh, they have to come to it on their own. And so the best way is just to plant seeds. Um, you know, pull up articles of people who have, have used plant medicines, pull up scientific evidence because it's out there. Um, and, and new evidence is popping up every single day on everything that's being studied. Uh, 5-MeO-DMT, ayahuasca, LSD, DMT, uh, MDMA, you know, it, it, MDMA is, uh, it, it may even be in phase three clinical trials now um, for a fast track program for using for, for treatment for PTSD. Like all of these psychedelics are finally breaking out into the scientific world once again and being shown to have efficacy in some type of, uh, healing way. And, and so we're, we're in a, an amazing time to be able to just pull up the internet and say, okay, you don't want to listen to me anymore, but take a look at this and, and just plant the seed and, and see where it goes. You know, if, if they, if, if they feel called to it, then that's, they feel called to it. And if they don't, then that's their path too. Um, so, but what, whichever way it goes, uh, um, you know, I, I wish the best and, and blessings to you. So, I hope that uh, gives a little, a little something. I think it did. I think it did. And how about you, Jesse? What's your, in your experience uh, as a veteran yourself, and also, you know, with all the work that you've done with veterans? What, what advice or guidance would you offer to someone who has a family member or a friend who, you see, who they see is struggling, and offering this as a potential opportunity for them? Yeah, for sure. And I completely agree with Michael. It's, it's one of those things, I think I mentioned earlier, we're all on our own healing paths and, and you cannot force somebody to go into this. And that tends to be one of the, the bad maneuvers of a lot of people coming from this is because they've seen so much of their own healing that they really want to share and they really want to push people. But for instance, especially with ayahuasca, which tends to be very powerful, if you push somebody that's not ready then I've seen that they just don't get as much out of it or they don't get anything out of it because they're not at that spot and they're not willing to do the preparation. The only reason they're going there is from pressure and that's not the appropriate way. Um, but what we all often tell vets when they're going through our program, especially those that have had, you know, pretty um, spectacular healing is that the best way that they can share this is share their story uh, but but live it. Um, it's not necessarily preaching, but people will notice when they have changed. People will notice by the changes in their life and how they are a different person. You know, like Michael and his family of that resonates, and people see that. And they might be a little bit weirded out at first, but when they see that and that continues to go on, then they start asking questions. And so the best way to really approach that is be that ambassador. So if they do want information, um, provide it uh be there and, and show them the the evidence and but just i i do warn against being too pushy or saying you should do this or this is for you but if they are open to it like hey check this out uh you might find this interesting especially for veterans if they see other veteran testimonials and we have a few on our website so if, if they are open to it 
you know, maybe check that out. And maybe that might be the thing that will, will have them plant the seed with a, with a lot of people. It does take some time, especially ayahuasca itself. Uh, I've seen countless times where people are kind of in that gray area. They've, they've seen it, they heard about it, but it does tend to grow. And so they'll, they'll see it, they'll do some research, they'll see somebody else and they'll think about it. And if they are struggling, then it'll kind of grow in their own head. And that's what worked for me. And so you have to be patient. Uh, you have to let people go through their own process and, and figure out how it relates to their life. Um, so again, be the ambassador of information, but don't be pushy about it. Um, yeah. And, and the, in terms of being a veteran and having benefits, unfortunately that is tricky. Uh, and there, that, that is a personal decision. Again, I completely agree with Michael. It's, it's um, when you see on the other side, you are going to be a better person. And it's, it's, you're not going to want to go back to what you were, but there is also a comfort in, 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 in where you are. And that, that is a hard thing for, for people to overcome. If you're used to suffering, you used to misery, change can be one of the most frightening things. And it can be hard to convince people to get out of that. And especially if there's a, a monetary benefit uh, to it, um, there are ways of doing it without it being announced or, 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 or broadcast. And so there are ways of, of healing yourself and going through this and not necessarily letting the VA know. But obviously, there are periodic checkups. Um, it's you know, it's a, no matter what, it's an imperfect system, and so every person has to make their own decision, and that's theirs to make. Fortunately, um, we are within sight uh, of, of some pretty dramatic changes. Uh, hopefully, within the next year and a half, two years, MDMA will be a viable therapy. Uh, that's that's what it's looking like, and psilocybin will be close to follow. It's coming fast. Uh, and you know you, you see that in Oregon with the and the decriminal uh, movements like in in Arizona. It's not not necessarily everything in terms of of the support that the VA could provide, but you know fortunately there is a light coming. Um, and so do what you can, be that information, be that support system, even if they are completely rejected. The best thing you can be is a family member, a loved one, uh, supportive, and provide. Uh, whatever you can to them while they go through this journey. And, you know, hopefully something like this helps you understand a little bit more uh, without being, you know, too pushy or, or, or without completely not understanding where somebody's coming from. That's great. And it's very wise. I think we can all take a note of that. Um, and last question, and we've kind of touched on this throughout this conversation, but I wonder if you'd both be able to speak a bit more directly to it. Um, any other medicines used other than cannabis, ayahuasca, and prescribed medicines? If so, which help the most? And do you feel that each helps different parts of trauma? And Michael, start with you because in the film, Brooke didn't go to SoulQuest with you. She she took a different path for her for, for her healing, right? So what was that like? Can you talk a bit more about what you saw there? Yeah, absolutely. Um, so I. <laughs> I didn't know any better. and I came back from my first ayahuasca ceremony and I pushed it on her until she couldn't handle it and screamed at me. And we had one of the biggest fights we had had to that point. And that kind of goes with that. Don't force someone else who isn't ready uh, <laughs> into these medicines because it, it's got to be on their own timing. Um, but, uh, thankfully she, uh, I, I backed off and she had a little bit of time and, uh, and spoke with Janine a bit and had the opportunity to go and, uh, do MDMA, uh, guided, uh, treatment. And, um, it was a much gentler medicine, uh, it doesn't generally come with uh, purging, and uh, and that really appealed to her. Um, you know, ayahuasca can be a pretty uh, pretty difficult one to go through, and it it generally involves a purge, um, and that can be really uh, a difficult thing for some people. Um, but for for her to be able to 
go to MDMA, it was probably the perfect first strong uh, psychedelic medicine for her in that it, it allowed her to get in touch with her heart again, uh, her inner self. Uh, it allowed her to speak to that part of herself that we oftentimes shut ourselves off from. And so in that case, uh, yeah, these psychedelics, they, they have a commonality between them, but they all speak to a different part of us. Um, they can all work on different uh, traumas, different emotional centers, different things that need to be released or, or worked through. Uh, and, and they all have their place, in my opinion. Um, I have been able to partake in uh, quite a few different uh, medicines, 5-MeO-DMT, um, DMT, um, ayahuasca on several different occasions, um, cannabis in, in a form, you know, strong enough, it can actually be a psychedelic on its own and it, it can bring about, um, healing in different ways. Um, they, they are all amazing things that when used in the right set and setting and context can bring about positive healing results, even through, uh, you know, difficult, uh experiences uh where where difficult traumas are brought up and, and are faced if the correct way of talking about it and working through it and approaching it afterwards is is taken it any of these experiences can become healing um it, it, it's it's incredible. Uh, you know, I, I joined the military uh, having never taken any illicit substance. Uh, I spent my entire military career not taking any illicit substance. You know, um, uh, cannabis in my 30s was the, the first thing, you know, to, that I ever experienced. Um, and, and I've been able to see how impactful and beneficial these uh psychedelics and and entheogens and medicines can be if they're used in the right context and, and what a benefit they can be to not only veterans but just uh people in general you know humans yeah thank you mike how about you jesse when you are uh working with these veterans through the program you know, you mentioned that there are a few different options and different medicines you you can work with. Is there a do you have a protocol or an a, approach that you'll kind of say maybe this person is better suited for this or that person better suited for that medicine? How does that work in the program? There, there's a little bit of that, but we are definitely at the stage where we just have to be patient. You know, a lot of this is very early stages and there is the jump to saying and I've already seen it like, you're going to use this substance for depression. You're going to use this substance for PTSD. And it's just not going to be, in my opinion, like that. Um, everybody's different. Everybody's genetically different. Everybody's at a different stage of healing. And all these are powerful. And they, you know, the, it might come about that this might be better for certain dynamics, certain timing. For instance, uh, if you see ketamine, somebody who's on SSRIs or a lot of medication and very actively suicidal, then ketamine might be the better step for them because something like ayahuasca has negative effects when you use it with certain medications and a powerful psychedelic, if they're already on this uh, sort of edge, might not be the best thing to add that sort of chaos factor. So I think there will be some sort of uh, outline of that, but I, I strongly believe that one of the biggest challenges going forward is that we have to really reassess how we view mental health because the way the VA does it, the way, you know, just sort of standard uh, protocol de deals with it is it's almost like a broken bone of like, you have this, this is the exact procedure 
that we're going to use on you. Here's your medication. Here's your cast. Boom. You're going to go come back in six months. And the mind and trauma are far more complex than that. Um, and that's what we're seeing even with veterans and PTSD. PTSD is a, a very complex diagnosis. It can mean now all sorts of different things. Um, and so we have to be much more aware of that. And so people with mental health, it can stem from all sorts of things of specific trauma, like in combat trauma, it can stem from childhood, uh, childhood trauma, and it can be the combination of both. Uh, we're seeing now that diet can dramatically affect it, uh, physical trauma to the brain, all sorts of different aspects. Um, and again, genetically, we all are also going to react to psilocybin, ayahuasca, cannabis differently. It's, it's sort of the reason why people can take the same strain of cannabis and somebody can become really anxious and somebody can become really calm. Uh, and you're going to just have different effects. We are different people. The brain is a very complex uh, organ, and it's not going to just be like, here's your prescription. You're going to be good in, in six weeks. It's ridiculous to think that way. So right now, we just kind of have to be a little bit more comfortable with maybe not knowing specifics, but having a little bit more of a loose protocol, a little bit more of a uh, holistic approach to all this stuff of understanding who the person is, what their life is, what they've tried, what they're eating, what's their social network even, all of that factors in. Um, and it's it's hard, it's gonna take a lot of time. Uh, it might take a little bit more investment on both the physician and the individual side, but that's the only way to solve this issue. And that's what we're seeing with veterans is whether or not they have a PTSD diagnosis, they're all struggling. That's the reason they're coming to us. And it seems to be completely independent of what the doctors told them of, of what is going to help them or where it's stemming from. Um, it, there's, it, there's a, a extreme disconnect from how we understand um, mental health and trauma on that diagnostic level. Um, and so I think we all, you know, I'm not, I'm not a physician, so I, I, let me just say that off the bat. I, I have no grounds to really speak on this, but even talking to physicians and experts, you know, some disagree a lot, do agree with that. I think we all just need to kind of like take that step back and, and figure out what's going on and, and be humble that this is maybe much more complex. And potentially that's the reason why psychedelics are having uh, such a prolific effect on our mental health is because they are also complex. And these two complex interactions merging together that have been developing uh, through hi human history for, for, you know, since the dawn of human history, maybe that's something that we're just not smart enough yet to really understand. And we should just sort of take the step back and kind of allow the results to happen. Yeah, well said, well said. Well, we're kind of heading into the home stretch here. I want to thank everybody for sending in some really fantastic questions. Uh, but before we wrap it up, you know, I'm I'm certainly curious. I'm sure everyone else is. So for the both of you, what's next? Like, where are we where are we going from here? And and Mike, maybe start with you. Like, what's what does the future look like for you in this path that you're on? Uh <laughs> right now we're piecing the house together um and then here in the near future i'm going to be heading overseas to do some more ceremony work um and learn uh plant medicine path uh and see kind of where that goes um and it's been it's been a path of rebuilding our family and the uh, the connection between myself and my wife and my kids and that is just beautiful where it's at and continuing to you know continually building day by day um so yeah it, i'm just kind of flowing and seeing seeing where this is gonna go but i'm feeling it uh leading to a deeper work uh, with uh, ayahuasca and and plant medicines, um, we'll see where that goes. 
That's wonderful. And I can speak for all of us here that, you know, we wish you a lot of success and safe journeys in all the realms you'll be traveling soon enough. Thank you. Thank and you. Jesse, what's the future of uh, Heroic Hearts coming up? You, you have a, an event not too long from now, actually tomorrow, if I believe, and some other things. What's going on with Heroic Hearts? Uh, yeah. Uh, so, I mean, in the immediate, tomorrow is Veterans Day. We, 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 we covered that at the top of, of uh, this broadcast. And um, so a couple of Marines today did a 21 base jump event. And so we're going to stream that on our YouTube and we're going to do like a live uh, Instagram TV, ask me anything. I'll be joined by Ian McCall, who's a, who's a UFC fighter. Uh, who has also found a lot of healing through through psychedelics. So that's tomorrow around 1 p.m. Eastern. So if you just want to join and you know uh, participate in the conversation, just spread the word a little bit more. Um, in terms of the rest of the year and next year, you know, a lot of up in the air. So we can't give specific dates, but it's definitely the best is yet to come in in a lot of ways. Uh, just continue to expand the message, continue to help veterans. Um, you know. The, the wave is, is, is strong and it's going to continue to go and all, all signals are pointing to that. So on our side, we're just going to try to keep doing it as responsibly, as safely as possible. Um, you know, really be cautious about respect and, and sustainability and all the things that are involved. It's a very complex issue. But um, we, we, like I said, fortunately, we've been able to really strengthen our infrastructure this year. So when things open up, uh, travel-wise, um, safety-wise, we'll be very well set to go to help a lot of veterans, and hopefully that expands to helping a lot of the rest of the community. Great. And, you know, we've been having the links up on the chat log here. Everybody, please share those far and wide. You know, share the film from shock to awe, you know, the Heroic Hearts Project, and, and uh, let's support these two wonderful people who have done incredible things to help help this world. And to the both of you once more, thank you so much. Thank you for your service. Thank you for all the work that you are doing to help more people than we'll probably ever know. And you've already changed the lives of, you know, countless people across the world and you're an inspiration, plain and simple. And you both strike me as humble enough to kind of, you know, just sit, accept that quietly. So I just want to repeat that on behalf of everyone here. And thank you all for attending. Thank you all for joining us. Uh, this will be the last event we'll do for this year. Uh, there's some changes on the way for our uh, group here that we're looking to bring out next year and continue this work and bringing out education and advocacy and support for a lot of these efforts to bring you know real and lasting change and sensible policy for psychedelics and entheogenic plant medicines. So we want to thank you for all, you know, attending all these uh, live events over the last few months and supporting us through the social media. So uh, thank you all for being a part of this. And once again, Mike, Jesse, thank you. Thank you so much. I wish you both a good night and a safe and healthy rest of the year. Thank, thank you. you so much. It's been great. And thanks, everybody, for showing up. Thank you, everyone. Take care.